Oh, look at that. Hey, guys. We are about 30 to 60 seconds away. How you, how you, how you doing over there, Alma? I'm doing great, dude. Okay, let's get those headphones on. And then let me go and get us on. Gonna get us on Facebook. Oh. Yeah, you're on camera, dude. Do you forget? <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. All right, guys, let me uh, <clears throat> get some music on there for a second while we're setting up. All right, so, all right, guys, so Fernando Petty here, Everest Coaching. Today we have a special guest, Alan Kontarevich. What is up, everybody? What's up? I'm coming for... There we go. All right, so uh, we're here with Alma Merrill again. Alma, thank you so much for doing this. Heck yeah. Uh, we actually got some uh, good feedback last time from quite a few people, uh, and I'm actually surprised because... Uh, when we were going live, we didn't have too many active viewers, but I guess after people started watching and we got a lot of good feedback. So yeah. I'm really, really happy about that. Um, but uh, Alma, what are we doing today? Who are we going to call today? We're going to call some Fizzbos. There we go. Some Fizzbos. Look at that. <laughs> Ooh. All right. All right. Well, let's, uh, let's get started. Alma, we're a little, we're a little late, but I think the people will forgive us. Yeah, I hope so. Where, where's your food at? Uh, it's down there. Yeah. Yeah. It's my Zao. Do you eat when you prospect? I will today. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's oh, going to be multifaceted. Yeah, today. Okay. Well, let's... Uh, what camera are we on? We on this one or that one? We're this on this one. one. You're that on that one? one? Okay. That one. All right. All right. Move the mic. Oh, do you have your pen? Hmm? your pen? Okay, great. All right, let's start dialing. That'd be good. Oh, I already set an appointment with this one. Hold on, let me just reset yeah, so what I'm doing right now is I'm just pulling up my dialer, just getting everything set and ready. I'm gonna push go, and then it's just gonna dial automatically for me all the fizzbos that I want to call. Awesome. Um, everything I got in here is so. So who, who are we dialing? Where are we dialing from right now? So we're dialing from my cell phone. Okay, but I mean on, on the system again. Can you maybe update the people on what system you're yeah, using? Yeah, so I use uh, I use uh, software by the Red X, so real estate data exchange system. They have a system called Vortex, and it's, it integrates your leads with your dialer, and it's seamless, and it's really, really good technology. So, highly recommend it. It's uh, super fast, too. Last time, people were answering, like, yeah. I mean, it just went over quick. It was so fast. It's really fast, yeah. And the cool thing is with this dialer over other dialers is that you hear them answer before, like, they, they'll pick up, and then yeah. you hear, like, you can hear them pick up before they answer. Whereas most dialers is voice activated, and it's like, beep. And then you'll know, yeah, they'll, they'll hear there's a little lag. Huh? Yeah, there's lag and delay. Yeah, we don't want to have that delay. So. Oh no! Oh no! It's obnoxious. All right, so we're gonna just dial, and uh, you guys can chime in as we go along. And uh, Alan, say hi to the camera. Look, you're what's on, up? You're on Facebook. Uh, oh shit, we're here. <laughs> <laughs> you crazy. <laughs> okay, so one thing disclaimer: last time we had a couple clients. Uh, obviously, this is this is this is cold calling, and we don't know the people on the other end. And so, when we are diming, just a little disclaimer for you guys out there listening: sometimes people will use profanity. Yeah. Sometimes they could be a little aggressive and rude. So, for all you guys out there, just understand that. Just know that we are cold calling. People might answer, and they might tell us to, you know what? So yeah. Yeah. yeah, and that's totally fine. It just happens. We had a great one the other day, <clears throat> How, didn't we? Yeah, the guy, yeah, it was what, uh, on Saturday, I think we Saturday, called him. Saturday, Alan was calling. Yeah, I called him, and the guy was like, I will not work with you. I will <laughs> not. I will he was not. so mad. <laughs> he was so mad. Did he swear? I don't know. Maybe, maybe he did. Knows. He was He was really upset. Hey, but, but it still worked out good. We set three appointments in one hour. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Not bad. And that I'm was three out of like that. five or six contacts. What were yeah, you calling? Were you calling buyers for sale by owners? Buyers. Buyers? Yes. Yeah. That's all I've done is buyers. Yeah. So when it comes down to buyers, I'll call those all day long. You Facebook. know what? Be before you die, let's give the, the viewers a little update or a, 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 some feedback on Alan and who he is. I mean, Alan, you started doing real estate what, how long ago? Uh, eight years, actually, in February. Yeah, so it's been eight years now. And you've been doing, I mean, the way you generate businesses is, is kind of similar to Alma, but you're not calling Fizbo's, correct? Uh -huh. For me, it's been all buyers, honestly. Yeah, the first maybe, what, year and a half, I didn't really do call any actually no buyers or sellers or anything it was more just your soi um and then i officially began calling buyers i think it was what like august of 2015 um and then fast forward you know the month after i closed five deals and i'm like oh holy crap it like works. this whole thing this whole calling thing works 
And then, you know, next couple, you know, next, you know in the four months, I closed 12 deals. And I'm like, there's got to be something here. There is, <laughs> there's something here. Um, and then at that point, I, I just began calling. And the next year, you know, did it, you know, triple the business. The next year after that, double, et cetera. And, but all I've done is callers. Yeah. I mean, buyers for, what, five, six years now. Yeah. So for everybody out there listening, you guys heard that story. If you guys know Alan, Alan is, uh, I'll say it over here, Alan's a baller. Baller. Alan, Alan does really good. He's, he's, he's you know, he's done a... A lot with him for himself, and and he does really well in in real estate. And now he's a team leader here at UV Real Estate, so we're happy to have you on. Thank you. Um, and uh, I've seen Alan call. He was a mentor when I started, and it does work. So for all you guys listening out there, um, if you guys, unknown caller. Sorry, I'm just. If you guys want to get into calling, um, obviously watch this, view this, share this, like this, share it to all your real estate friends. And uh, we are doing this here at Everest Coaching. We do a lot of calling. That's all we like, do. Um, that's all you do. That's all I do. Yeah, I mean, of course, I have repeat business, of course, but yeah, yeah I mean, to, to, for business acquisition, in my opinion, there's just nothing better than physical calls. So, highly recommend it. Uh, the, the one thing about for sale by owners that I love is that it's highly predictable as long as you're as long as you're skilled. Yeah. yeah. So I was gonna say as long as you're highly skilled. Actually, you don't have to be highly skilled. You just have to be disciplined every day making the calls, and then you can have predictable income off of real yeah. estate. Which is it paused <laughs> right now? Can you guys see? Cause it's looking pause on my end. <laughs> Alan's looking like. Uh, uh, can you see it over there? Is it going good? But yeah, no, I, I never, I never what got into the video. The though. Yeah, oh, so I never got going. into it because what I was doing worked. Right. You know, so I'm yep. like, well, I'm not going to try to fix something. It's not, it's not broken. You know. Exactly. Um. So yeah, all about preference. Yep. So hold on, before you start, when when Everest does the calling, was it did it was it today? Was it yesterday? We do. Was there a call school yesterday? Uh, prospecting schools next week. Next week, okay, that's when it's yep. so next week. So okay. that is what day is that going to be? Uh, that is Let's pull that up. Let's let everybody know. Pull it up. So, uh, prospecting school here in Cottonwood Heights building. It is the fourteenth, fifteenth, fourteenth, and fifteenth from oh. nine a.m. And they'll be teaching nine to five. Pretty much all of this. What, what you're doing right now, they right? They will. Yep. They'll be teaching this. They'll be teaching just lists just sold. They'll be teaching. Um, the whole gamut, whole gamut of, you know, how to, how to work through SOI, all of that stuff. So highly recommend wow. attending. All right. Well, if you're ready, you guys ready? I'm ready. Well, I just have you to guys are ready? I just let's, have to dial uh, back in here. Let's do it. It times me out when I dial. Let's get it going. If I don't get started, it times me out. You guys think uh, Alma's going to get a appointment set on his first contact? We'll find out. Yeah. It might take two. Might take oh, we'll see. oh, 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 no. let's see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's see. I was looking at my numbers and I was like, oh my gosh. Like I was looking at all my past uh, appointment numbers and it's literally, I've been like one for 20 or something. Like one turn down for every 20 yeah. people I spoke to last. And so yeah. Those are go. damn good Don't numbers. Call her. They're really good. Okay. This is our dialer. Telling me to dial in. Okay. When we push dial, we're off to the races. All right. Let's see. I have to listen closely so I can shut the music off as soon as. They pick up? Yeah. Hello? Oh, oh hold on one sec. Sorry, my phone's being weird. Hold on. Sorry, are you there? I'm here. Ryan? Okay, sorry. Hey, I was calling about, um, you had a, a home for sale a little bit ago over in off Thousand East. Yep. Are you are you still selling that? Uh, yeah. Okay, and you're selling that for, for sell by owner, right? Correct. Okay. And I don't, I'm assuming you're an agent? Yeah, have you had a ton of agents calling you trying to list it? <laughs> uh, yep, it's been nonstop since the since about 8.01 this morning. Oh, my. Did you just list it today? Um, so let me just, uh, I mean, it officially went live, like, yesterday evening. Oh, okay. Um, but, yeah, so I guess today's the first day that okay. it's been out there. Yeah. And for so just to give you, like, the, like, I am, I am not looking for a backup agent. I already have one in mind um, that I've worked with before, if it comes to that. Um, I will negotiate with a 
agent if they decide to bring me um, a buyer for the house. Sweet. Okay. Um, and that can look anywhere from like one one to three percent, depending on you know the sale of the home and and the individual. And I can you know work that out with whoever brings me a buyer if that's how it gets sold. Cool. Um, yeah, and that should be everything. Cool. That's great. Yeah. For, well, fortunately, the purpose for my call, we just sold a couple other properties not far from you there. And so I was just kind of calling to get some info on this one. Yep. Is that okay? Absolutely. Okay. So t- tell me a little bit about it. So how many bedrooms does it have? So as the, um, as the Zillow listing shows, it's two bedroom, one bath. Okay. So the it's- one bathroom, it's a little bit of a janky setup. The one bathroom is in the master bedroom. So the reality is it's not, it's not, it's not going to be a home for a family with like multiple children or older children or anything like that. Right. Um, I actually bought the house when I was a bachelor thinking this is great. I'll do some renovations and, you know, add a couple bathrooms and whatever I can do with it. Yeah. Um, like cir- circumstances change that. And I, um, it does, doesn't does make it sense have... for me to hang on to the home any longer. Does it have square footage to add Go some ahead. additional bedrooms and baths and that stuff? Yeah, I mean you can you can absolutely expand the property in the the home. Okay. Um, you know, it was built in 1921. It had an addition put on. I'm not sure when the small addition was put on, but um, you know, I mean it's it's like it's not a turnkey. Um, home necessarily it is in the sense that like you can move in and like do nothing to it okay. um for quite some time but you know depending on what you i had big plans to renovate it and, and you know add some square footage and stuff but just never got around to it how long so, have you had it um it will be two years in april okay so mm-hmm. yeah i i kind of um, plan to live in that home for quite some time. And then, um, a relationship took me out of the state of Utah. Oh, gotcha. So, so are you out of state and it's, is it vacant yep. now then? No, I actually, so for the last year I've been renting it out on Airbnb for long-term rentals. Mm-hmm. So, um, minimum 30 day stays. And so it's rented out solid since I put it on last February. And so there is a currently a renter in there and then one more in there before I, and they, they booked the place like probably six, eight months ago. Oh, wow. Um, so I couldn't, yeah. So, but I, I put a cap, um, like probably three months ago, I put a cap on the last renter that's going to be in there and they're going to be out at the, like, I think it's April 24th. Oh, perfect. They'll be out. So the reality is trying to find a binder, buyer and get everything closed out um, so that as soon as they're out, we can change over the ownership. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's a good scenario to be in because then you can just find a buyer who has intent to purchase and then you can, you know, kind of have, have some expectation of what you, you know, what it's going to look like for you. So tell me a little bit more about it. So um, interior's good. Right. Uh, exterior's good. Yard's good. What does the yard look like condition wise? Yeah, so there's just a small front yard that you can see from the photo, but then the backyard is zero scape. Um, you know, there's some room in the backyard to do some things, but um, yeah, it's totally zero scape. Um, the, when I bought the house, uh, a new roof was put on. So, um, so the roofing is, you know, less than two years old. Um, the house was painted at that time as well. Um, yeah, interior. Um, I haven't done a ton with the interior except for paint, and I did remodel the bathroom a little bit. Mm -hmm. I kind of, um, you know, steam cleaned and brought everything back up to new when it comes to the tile, and then um, I did some renovations and and switched out, put a new vanity and sink, and and, um, had some um, plumbing done in the bathroom because the shower, you know, wasn't functioning well and so oh, gotcha. brought that up to speed and you know did that have new, to be like changed out all the way to the street stuff like that or was that just inside no, the house no actually when i moved in 
I have, um, there was a, was some type of a blockage or something. So I actually had them replace some pipes from the street to the, the sanitary system when I moved in. Oh, wow. Okay. Those are, that's usually pretty pricey. I can't even remember what that the bill was on that. Okay. Um, but yeah, there was some, okay. some type of, I, yeah, and I can't even remember what all the work was, but yeah. So, I mean, it's not, I've taken good care of it in the last two years. Um, and that's also why I've done, like, I wasn't sure what I was going to do with the home. And that's why I did long-term rental because I figured, you know, people staying for two, three days, right? you know, they don't give a crap about the house. But I figured, you know, a lot of the people that have rented the property for 30 days or 60 days is uh-huh. what, I've been getting, um, you know, they tend to take care of the house. Oh, that's nice. Living in it for a longer period of time. Yeah. And I've, you know, and I've primarily been um, renting it to professionals that um, don't no longer have to be in the office. You know. Right. So. So, and I, I have somebody that checks on the house um, and turns it over for me, and then I fly back um, probably every uh, every other month, and you know, do a walk through it between renters and stuff. So. Okay, cool. Yeah, it seems like I just pulled up the Zillow ad, actually. That looks really nice. It seems like you've done some cool stuff to it. I love the floors. So it's got it's got that that appeal, you know, that small house appeal that everybody loves. I would say like like you said, the only downside to it yeah, is, I mean, is it's, just the bathroom access. Yeah, and I mean it's not, you know, it's like I know the market's tough, but um you know, it's a 900 and I think, I don't remember, 81 square feet bungalow, mm-hmm. right? It's right. not, you know, it's not an amazing redone everything, you know, but like I imagine the home buyers are people that like want to be in that area and plan on doing some renovations or like, you know, like when I bought it, it was a single guy that wanted to you know, make the property my own and, you know, didn't need something huge right. um, and plan to do the renovation, you know, so well, that's well, kind of, but, well, you know, I guess, and, or people investing, right? Because everything around that house is um, being torn down. Additions are being put on like the, you know, and the ninth and ninth district is gentrifying. So like, you know, it's a completely, in my opinion, it's a completely upside investment. I didn't want to get rid of it um, just for that purpose because I'm, I know what it'll be worth in a few years. Right. But, that, that was my next question um, is kind of why not hang on to it for a little bit and then just sell it in a couple of years when you have a little more, you know, higher value. Of course, I guess there's interest rates that are drop or uh, increasing as well. So it may be the perfect storm for you. Yeah. I mean, th- honestly, the only reason I'm selling it is because me and my partner are starting a family. Um, we live out of state and it doesn't really make sense for us to hang on and have an extra headache, you know, mm-hmm. especially if we're going to have newborns running around and, and different <laughs> things like that in the next year. Mm-hmm. Like it's just one less thing that I don't want to deal with, you know, my, and we both work full time and it's, you know, it's just an extra headache. Yeah. Um, and you know, we've talked about moving back to Salt Lake someday. And, and the reality is even if we do that, that house would not be big enough for us and our family. Right. Um, so it just doesn't make a whole lot of sense. And yeah. the market is good. So we're like, we might as well, you know, try to um, make a turn a little profit on it. And, you know, um, yeah. it's what it is. I love that. But I, I have, my partner has zero sentimental value with it. I have a ton because, you know, I purchased it. It was actually the first home I bought. Oh, yeah. Um, That'll do it. And, you know, the you're two blocks away from 9th and 9th where you have all the shops and restaurants and bars, mm-hmm. and, you know, so it's just such a cool area to be. But, you know, yeah, everything I've is, sold in that area sells just in days and for top dollar. So, yeah, it's a great area. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm I've had um, some people that want to get in the house and I'm I sent a Airbnb or I sent a message to the person that's in there right now renting it to see if I could pay them to leave for a couple hours. Mm-hmm. So planning on um, getting some people in and hosting a open house soon. Uh, just haven't figured out what that day is going to be yet. Sounds good. Well, let me ask you this. And, you know, I don't, 
I'm sure there's a certain amount of cash you need to get out of the property in order to make it worth it for you to sell, right? Yeah, I mean, I want to get five hundred twenty-five thousand dollars out of the house. Okay. <laughs> yeah, and I, looking at that price and knowing that area, I mean, there was another house that I just sold that was really, or actually, actually, we didn't end up doing it. it was a buy, I was looking at it with a buyer, and they were uh-huh. almost six hundred for that same size house. And so my thought is, I was, how did you come up with your price? How did you price it? Um, hold on. Sorry. I'm switching over to my earbuds. Um, can you still hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Oh, and, still hold nice. on. Oh, you're good. Shoot. Oh, there you go. Okay. Um, and I'm sorry. What was your first name again? My name's Alma. Alma. Yeah. Alma. Um, how I, Hey, Minton. How I came up with that price is I actually had an inspection on it um, about three weeks ago, and they gave me, you know, so you, they gave uh, me fair market value for that. Okay. Um, and then, you know, based on, like, the comps in the area, the availability, and then also um, knowing that we're coming into, you know, um, selling season yeah. here. Um and not trying to necessarily get into like bidding wars. It's just like, this is what I want. And so if somebody mm-hmm. offers it to me and wants to take it off the market, you know, yeah, let's move forward. Yeah. I think, I think you're priced. Well, let me ask you so, this. If, if, if mm-hmm. we could figure out a way that by working together on it, we could list it open, you know, put it to the open market. And even by after paying commissions, you're able to net that five twenty five. um, I mean, obviously, you'd be open to at least exploring that, right? I mean, I, I, I would be in, I would be open to exploring it. Um, and you do, know, but to get my five twenty-five out of it, yeah, and it may not make sense. Like, I mean, you'll know as well as I will whether or not it makes sense. Mm-hmm. But what, what I, you know, just having experience in that area and just seeing how fast the properties sell and how much more they sell than what we anticipate. You know, I'm looking at your price per square foot. I'm looking for the kind of the value of that area because location, 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 right? And so looking at yep. your price point based on what I think you could potentially sell for, there could be a substantial difference there. And so, and like I said, it may or may not be the case. I haven't done the research on it, but I mean, if we could figure out a way to do that, net you what you need to, you know, even after paying commissions, you could actually put more in your pocket. I mean, obviously that would be something you'd, you'd be open to then. Um, yeah, I'd be open to it, but like, I don't, I'm not, um, you know, it's been on the market for 24 hours Mm -hmm. and not even, Right. and you know, I'm, well, here's what I see happening um, in in these scenarios. Cause if you're, for instance, I, because it's only been on the market 24 hours, it's actually, keep in mind, we've sold, we, we've sold two homes, um, you know, yeah. by ourselves. Oh, good. Recently. So this, One, this isn't your first ago. radio. Yeah. So this is, no. Okay. Yeah. So, so go ahead. What were you going to say? Oh, I was just going to say, I, I really, you know, and, and being candid, it wouldn't make sense for us to work together unless these numbers work. But like I said, you'll know as well as I will, whether or not they, it would actually work. But what I would do is I'll do, since you're out of state, I'll just do a little research on the property, do some numbers, um, kind of pull up some of the other properties we've sold there recently and just see where your value is. Um, mm-hmm. And if it's good, then yeah, we would definitely want to work together on it. You know, meaning you could net what, you know, you could net that 525. If not, then that'll be obvious as well. So, I mean, if you're open to it, even exploring it, you know, I don't have any high pressure sales pitch or any of that stuff. I can, I'm sure you can tell I'm a pretty laid back guy, but it's just a matter of looking at the numbers because with, with our marketing and our yeah. research, we've been able to sell properties just, you know, because we sell one out of every three homes in the city. So we have a huge reach and tons of buyers. And so it may make sense for you. Yeah. And I'm, um, I mean, like in order to, for me to do anything with anybody, you know, it's like, oh, I mean, 6% of some, you know, 6% is, 
another thirty, forty thousand dollars somewhere in there, I believe. Yeah, I'm not, and it might you know, be more than that. I mean, doing the math in my head, but the, the one I just listed, they were a hundred grand well, underpriced, and so yeah, they were paying me fifty grand to sell the house, but I made them an additional 50 grand after commissions, you know? And if that, cause that's, to me, that's value. You know, it's like, if I can't bring you value and actually put more money in your pocket after working with me, we probably shouldn't be working together. Yeah. And I just don't, I don't know, just given like the how the year the house is built, the square footage, the, mm-hmm. the weird bathroom <laughs> situation, it's just like, you know, I don't, I don't anticipate somebody wanting to spend more, you know, $525,000 for that property, like that house, like fairly in my mind, it's like, it's fairly worth that. I know. Um, Well, and that's just the crazy market. The property itself. Yeah. The property itself. So that location is like a win, win, Mm -hmm. like whoever, whoever purchased the home, whether it's 525 or 550 or whatever, Mm -hmm. like, there's if they if they plan on hanging on to it for a few years total win regardless you know right. yeah so well let's let's at least look at the I numbers mean, i'll do you some know, research i've tried to talk my partner see if yeah. it makes sense you know go and if it sorry there's yeah, a little if delay it, but. If, it, if you have an appealing if you have a, an appealing um number situation that you want to call me back with i'm i'm happy to have any conversation Cool. I will tell you though, um, you know, one of the things that I would probably say that isn't really probably what you want to hear, which is like, I don't plan on signing any type of contract with anybody. If I need somebody yeah. to sell that house for me, I already have an agent. Yeah, no, I'm not, with, I would so, feel the same way. The only um, the only reason I would ask you to sign anything with me is if I brought a tremendous amount of value to the table. You know, the only, and that's so I get well, paid at the end legally. But in reality it's going to make sense for you. Um, it, you know, if, or I should say, if it makes sense for you, then obviously that would be the case. But if not, well, then, you know, no harm, no foul, no big deal. I, you know, the, the way it can make sense for you and you can add value is like, bring me a buyer for five fifty, right? and you know, I'll pay you 3%. And that's actually what we do. I mean, that's yeah. literally what I do by listing a property is the, the amount of buyer leads that I pull on that property is exponential. I mean, just to give you an idea, every time I list a property with the amount of marketing exposure that we do with our company, we will literally bring 30, 40, 50,000 views online. And then we're getting buyer leads, meaning people calling us legitimate buyers, not, not just tire kickers or neighbors that want to see what you did at the interior, you know, but like legitimate buyers who want to come see the property and walk through it. I mean, daily I'm walking people that I've found online through the listings that I have online. And so, and by listing it, you can well, just so hit I don't that whole understand. market. Yeah. I just don't understand why somebody wouldn't want to just bring, you know, it's like mm-hmm. if I'm not working with an agent, but yeah. you have people you're representing, yeah. I don't understand why everybody wants to call me and get me to Here's, sign on with them. I think it's to, great. To list my property. I think it's a great question. A buyer, yeah. I think it's know? a great question. The, the reality is that you know, unless you have, you know, I, I had a mentor years ago who told me, you know, unless I have apples to sell, I can't sell apples. And what, what this does is your house is the apple and it's putting it in the open market. And I don't care if I find the buyer or not. I care that your house sells. But what I do care about is that you net what you want to and need to on the property. So what I do before we even consider yeah. listing it so that more buyers can see it, um, we put it on market. We or, or before before we do that, we look at your numbers, identify your your price point, and identify what your minimum standards are for how much you want to net. And in this marketplace, it has been just cake to get people their money. And usually, it's a lot more. Usually, it's fifty, seventy thousand dollars more than what they are anticipating after commissions. So, and I'm not saying that's right. definitely going to be the case with yours because I think you you understand your market really well and you understand how to price a home. But looking at the ones I just sold. Um, that could definitely be the case. I mean, there's several right over by Sugar House Park and stuff that I've just sold, and they just sold way higher than I anticipated. And so the seller, obviously, even after paying me a listing commission, they were super stoked, you know? Well, and to be, yeah, to be quite frank with you, I am in no rush nor need to sell that house. Good. Um, It's not a financial need of ours Mm -hmm. to get rid of that property. 
Good. Um, and also, you know, I, I know what it's for, you know, and mm-hmm. I'm not like, I'm <laughs> yeah. also not like money hungry to get, you know, I'm not money hungry to get $75,000 yeah, over and, that. And being you know, candid, I don't, you I don't won't plan even, on getting you won't even be able to control that. The market is what really will give you that money. What, what we can control is, is how yeah. much it's marketed. Cause if it's out there and eyes are seeing it and people yeah. are wanting to see it, then the market will dictate what it sells for. I can't price a home. You can't price a home. And that's, it's kind of nice because to your point, you don't want to be money hungry, but in reality, the market is money hungry and it's just going to give you that money. Yeah. So, and that's why I'm just like, I don't, so people, you know, all day today, since 8.01 this morning, <laughs> people have Jeez. been telling me they're going to take my listing and put it in with, oh, um, you know, their network of people and blah, blah, blah. Uh-huh. And I'm like, great, do it then. Yeah, it's do like, it. Yeah. Bring me a freaking buyer. Yeah. Bullshit. No, it's true. And in reality, yeah, I don't, it's, it's not I rocket mean, science, it, but there is a method to it, you know? Yeah. People, but I mean, also it's just like you're, you know, I don't, I, I play like my full-time job is, um, you know, it's, it's not in the hospitality industry by any means, but it is in the, you know, you have to understand relationships very well to sell a product, right? right? Or yep. to like, my background is not marketing and, um, but that is kind of the job I do today. And mm-hmm. so, you know, for me, I look at all these people that are calling me and, and like trying to list my property and the, like, I would go about this much different. Oh like, yeah. Well, I would they're try they're looking buyer, for a quick buck, right? but it needs, would, you know, it needs to be strategic. Otherwise right. you're not going to be squeezing every dime out of the marketplace, you know? If it's not strategic, then you don't have the full result because well, anybody, anybody can sell a house in this marketplace, but can they sell it for the yeah. top, top value that it's, that the market will yield? And that's the question. And like I said, your house, well, I don't even that, know if we can on yours or not. It may, it may not. I haven't done the numbers on it yet, but I'm going to yeah. at least do the numbers and see if it, if it would for no. you. I'll be candid well, with you. And if we're talking relationships though, and like you, you as an agent, you build your reputation and your client base mm-hmm. based on treating each each individual right and, and you know coming up with happy customers, right? right? Yep, definitely. So I don't understand why somebody wouldn't take the opportunity. If I'm saying I will work with this, uh, you know, an agent, mm-hmm. um, you know, I don't have an agent, but I'll work with an agent and I'll pay him a commission based on you know what we negotiate. Right, it might be three percent, might be two percent. Right, so, yeah, yeah, definitely. But I would take the opportunity to like win a client over with showing them a property that like, you know, it's, it's a, it's a hustle. Oh, totally. Yeah. Do right by a client and, and and your word of mouth of like treating somebody right. Um, you know, giving them a deal that isn't necessarily in their best interest right? right. or in your best interest is gonna, you know, pay, like dividends down the road. It's exactly. a long game. I was just like I was just showing so many a property don't to want to play. I was just showing a property to a client today. So and to that point, and he's like, "Oh, we really love this house. What do you think?" And I'm like, "Being candid, you're not getting a value with this house. It's, it's you know. So if I'm helping the buyer out, I'm going to help them un- identify the value, you know. And it's the same thing if I'm helping a seller out. Yeah. If I can, because it's the other coin, you know, when I'm helping a seller out, it's like, hey can I bring you value? Can I bring you the most value? If I can't, I'll be candid with you and tell you, look, you're priced right. The home's going to sell. You're going to be good. But if it's like, Hey, you got, if, if you and I are working together, I bring another 50, you know, 20, 50, even 10 grand more to the table after settlement, then it would definitely make sense. You know? So, yeah. So, okay. Well, let's do yeah. this. I mean, if you're open to it, you, you know, take a look and yeah, I'll, I'll take a look and we'll, See what it looks like. Do you do you zoom? You do you ever zoom? Uh, I zoom every day, all day for work. <laughs> cool. This point. Let's do this. I'll let's put. Yeah, it, which I actually need to get back to work. Yeah, I'll let you go. So, I, do, I need to get jamming too. Go let, ahead. Let's do this if you're open to it. I'll put you down. Um, I'll do a little research between now and let's put a, a put a time together for a zoom call. That way you can see my ugly mug and we can kind of chat a little bit. 
Um, I have a spot open. I, on are you typically available like afternoons or evenings? Um, I I am usually busy afternoons. Um, with my full time job, but uh. I also, I, w- I want to be very clear with you before I st- like commit to setting up any Zoom with you. Sure. Even if you come back and tell me that there's added value here in signing on with you, I still have zero intention of signing something with you yeah. anytime soon. No, I totally, I would feel the same way. I mean, so, it, would, it would have to be absolute value, makes perfect <laughs> sense. Let's do it from your part. I'm not, you know, I'm not high pressure, any of that junk. We'll simply look at the numbers. I'll share with you what it looks like. I'll share with you why I think your home is val- valued there. And it may be less than what you have it listed for. I'm not sure, but I'm, I'm just looking at some of these other ones that I just sold. And based on what I've sold, you, you, it, there could be some more value there. And we'll just look at that, but n- no obligation, no relationship there. You know, it's just a matter of let's look at some numbers, see if it makes sense. If it does cool, let's do it. If not, no big deal. Why don't you put your numbers together and let me know okay. what you come up with? And th- and here's the, the other problem, though, that I have with that as well. Mm-hmm. Because, and this is not any knock on your integrity or anything like that. Well, I don't have integrity. Um, I'm a real estate agent, but, so I threw that out the door when I signed my license. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, well, then, then of course, we don't need to work together. Right. Because, I, like, just like I said, I mean, like... <laughs> I yeah no I I don't even know what I was gonna say at that point because that's like I, I, I yeah I don't know <laughs> I can't remember what I was gonna say now yeah if you, I mean being, I've been doing this for twenty years you know we 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 I have a ton of repeat business and clients and you know they love me I love them if we work together we'll have a great experience if not you know it's totally fine we'll still have a great experience even if we don't work together so. Um, I'll just do some numbers, put them together, and then sure. I'll, I'll just hit you up for a Zoom call maybe tomorrow evening. Um, is 7 p.m. too late for you? On a Friday night? Yeah. Is it? What about, what does your uh, afternoon tomorrow yeah, or your Saturday I have, look like? I have, um, my afternoon tomorrow is better than my Saturday. Okay. let's. I'll just put you down for like three. Two or three in the afternoon. What? Which one would work better for you? Um. Why don't you do two? Okay. And do your numbers and make sure it even makes sense to, for us to have that conversation. Okay. Cool. That's perfect. And I'll I'll check with you in the morning. Make sure you're still okay to meet up at two on Zoom too. And then, yeah, like I said, no no skin off of my back. If it makes sense, you'll you'll want to work with me if we do. It won't be me trying to convince you. It'll be like, okay, here's the numbers. Here's what we can do to sell the home. This is our process. Does it make sense? If you're like, yep, it makes sense. Let's do it. I trust you. I love you. Let's do it. And then we'll we'll work together. No big deal if not. All right. Okay. Well, I will just wait to hear from you tomorrow. Okay, cool. Appreciate it. And remind me, where are you at? Where are you living at right now, you and your, your partner? Uh, Colorado. You're in Colorado. Nice. I just went through there a couple weeks ago. I love it out there. Okay. Beautiful. Ryan. Not as great as Salt Lake. Yeah. Really? Do you like Salt Lake better? Yeah. Do you? Yeah. I like Well, Salt Lake. it depends on where you're living in Colorado. Where do you guys live at? So I'm still poor Collins. Oh, okay. So we still have uh, ways to get to all the things that I love. Uh, yeah. Or it's just not as convenient as that house was in Salt Lake for me. So, yeah. all right. Well, I've got to run because I need to get back to work, and I've got another real estate agent calling me. I'm sure. Oh, geez. So, okay, cool, I will Ryan. Talk to you soon. Appreciate Thank you, you for okay. your time. My pleasure. Thank you for yours, and we'll I'll talk to you bye. tomorrow. Okay, bye. Good. That was good. So, Alan, 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 tell me. Alan, What's tell up? me. How do you feel Alma handles objections? I feel like he handles them really, really good, actually, because yeah. even though they hit him with an objection, he just overcomes it. He goes around it. You know, he explains the reasoning behind everything. 
and then just goes to the next question. Goes to the next question. I'm not trying to make them wrong. Yeah. yeah. You, they, you, you agree with everybody. You, you know, yeah. I love the fact that you agree with everybody, you know, because everybody, typically the call that they're expecting is the agent to be against you. Right. It's like, oh, this agent's trying yeah. to get money out I of hate, me. I hate agents. Agents suck. Wait, but but I don't <laughs> suck. No, stop. Yeah. Just I, like, I like how be, you absorb Be that. like, oh my gosh, they do suck, don't they? Yep. Holy cow. It's t- I hate working with it. It's so obnoxious. You know, and when he was like, uh, not to question integrity. your integrity. I'm all, dude, I don't have any integrity. I'm a real estate agent. I signed that, that, that away years off. ago. Yeah. yeah. Like, it, so what it does is you're just, it's, uh, you know, I always, I always mention this too. When I talk to people, it's like Kung Fu, right? My brother's a Kung Fu master okay. out in California. He's world renowned for being one of the best Kung Fu masters literally in the world. It's okay. crazy. He's had people from all over the world come train with him because he's so pure with the okay. form and he does Sansu Kung Fu, which is the art of war. And in the art of war, the method is you bring their energy with you. So when somebody punches at you, you don't hit it and block it. You actually bring it with you. And it's the same thing when you're prospecting, talking to a buyer lead, anything like that. You want to bring the energy with you. So if he's in a spot where it's like, man, I hate agents. I've had 50 of them call me today. They freaking suck. I've been hanging up on agents all day. It's like, oh my gosh, I'm sorry. I know this is, it's crazy. Freaking dumbass agents, man. When are we going to, you know, when are they going to stop freaking burning your time? Yep. Like, and what am I doing? I'm using his time. So I'm taking his, <laughs> but you know what I mean? But it's like a matter of it's, it's having that, uh, it's understanding where they're coming from. Cause yeah. this is a real feeling. This is a real emotion they're having. They're, they're really frustrated. And so if you can show them like compassion and love and you don't have to say the word integrity. Yeah. No. You don't have to say it. it. They'll see it and they'll feel it because you're giving them great service and great responsiveness and you understand where they're coming from. You're not trying to, Oh, but well, you just haven't had a good one yet. (laughs) Trying to pitch your own ego. No, dude, we all suck. It sucks. I'm sorry. You know, I I promise you we'll, we'll do better. And when you have an experience with me, you'll really love it. Regardless if we work together, you're going to love having the, whatever communication with me that you have. Yeah, that was great. I really, I really enjoyed that call. I actually, you know, sometimes I hear calls and, and agents will, apply pressure and keep them on the phone longer. It didn't feel like you had to keep this guy on the phone. Like he, no. he voluntarily sat and took time with you when at the beginning, I didn't think he was going to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it was well, and, and being, and that's why I was like, you know, I, I, I can tell when I'm going to get an appointment yeah. with somebody yeah. because of their responsiveness and being candid. If you have that mindset, like, Oh, I already got the, it's in my bag. Then you can pass that in your head. You can pass it by and then you can serve them. Because there's always that wall of, you know, you have that wall. I always break it down. You have the, the, the wall that you have to break, which should be taken down within about three to five seconds. Yeah. Then you have this section of rapport building, which is asking questions about the home. And then you have the close, which is, can we get an appointment? And I probably had to close him six times. Yeah. If I least. went through and counted, it was probably at least six times because he's like, well, I already have another agent I would use. Yeah. Don't care. I don't, I didn't even, I didn't even address, address Shelf it. it. I didn't yep. even, yeah. I didn't even stop and use my own pride and say, well, what does he do? How many, how many homes does he sell? None, yeah. of, none of that matters to them, nor do they care, nor the, nor do they know the difference. I mean, he, honestly, he doesn't know the difference between the guy he wants to list with or the gal that he wants to list with how much, how many homes they've sold versus what I've sold. They, they don't care. Yeah. All yeah. they care is how you make them feel and how you can relate to them and how you treat them. So, yeah. Couldn't you know what? You. Couldn't agree with you more. Yeah, that, dude, that, that was amazing, by the way. Good Thank job. You. We'll give you another round of applause for that one. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and, and that's, Daniel is our studio audience. <laughs> Thank you, Daniel. <laughs> and that's the most you can do, too, just on, to that point as far as the appointment and getting a Zoom appointment. It's the most you can do when they're out of state. It's totally okay, guys. Yeah. You, they don't need to be here. You don't need to walk through the house. If there's pictures up on Zillow or wherever... That's where you're getting the information from. I mean, I just listed a house. I didn't even walk through it, you know, just talked to the guy on the phone and closed him and listed his house. Then I walked through it after I had listed it. I had to put a lockbox and a yeah. sign, you know, when I was driving by the other day, I was like, oh, I'm going to go drop this off here. So it's like if you run your business um, a little more integral and a lot less concerned, you'll have a lot better outcome. Yeah. My, con- my biggest concern when I'm talking to somebody like that is, man, how – how can we make him have a good experience? Exactly. Cause this he's been, it's been sucking for him, you know? 
And so well, the thing, the thing is you can tell by that call that he's not wanting to go through the hassle of selling it. Right. You know, so yeah, you, yeah, yeah. We, we picked up on that. He, he even admitted, he's like, I'm not a marketing guy. I'm not this, right. I'm not that, but it's what he has to do to get the home sold right now. And he's out of state. He just wants somebody he can trust. Exactly. That other agent is probably the only agent he knows that he trusts. Yeah. yeah. That's why. But if he can trust somebody, me, and have somebody who's way more competent or seems way more competent than the other guy, he's going to ha- he's going to choose me. Exactly. All day long. Cuz then he knows it's in good hands, somebody's taking care of it. I don't have to deal with it. I'll do electronic side. I don't even have to come back to Utah to close like we're good, you know, and he can go live with his sweetheart and build his family and have a great life. Exactly. Where he wants, you know, out in Denver. So that's awesome. Great job again. Thank Alma. You. That was a really good call. That was the first call. First call. First call, huh? Yeah. yeah. First contact. Yeah, what? Oh, what, what, what did we say one for, that? did we say he first did. call? <laughs> he did. Look at that. Good job, <laughs> Alma. That is another round of applause. Look at that. <laughs> All right. So guys, uh, real quick down before you start dialing again, yep. um, I wanted to, uh, number one, remind people, if you guys like what you saw here, if you guys like Alma and what he does, um, and actually we're talking about getting some stuff with Alan because Alan's a pretty pretty awesome buyer's, uh, uh, buyer lead agent calling, however you want to call it. Yeah. They're not really cold calls, though, when you call oh, them. They're huh? warm. They're warm. Every call is yeah, warm. It's a little different. That's what we do here at UVO Group, too. Um, but Everest Coaching Guys, they teach all of it. Um, that was very similar to a buyer's lead, internet lead call. Mm-hmm. Um, after you, you know, get past the little bit of the scripted part where you ask him about the property, you're just building rapport. And uh, I thought you did a great job uh, building you. rapport and getting that appointment. So um, good job again. But April, is it April? No, it's February. February, the calling school is coming up. Yep. Uh, so prospecting school here in uh, Union Park right here, Cottonwood Heights, um, on Monday the 14th, 9 a.m., And that goes all day. So you can come have a lunch. There will be snacks there and stuff like that. But we'll have a little lunch break in between. And then we'll we'll get jamming again. And I'm there every day, each day. Awesome. So if you guys want to learn, I know a couple of you guys reached out. um, Richard Ortiz, friend of ours, real estate agent. Yeah, Uh, huge huge shout out to Richard. Yeah, huge shout out to Richard Ortiz. He's probably watching right now. But Richard, he... uh, He's a really good agent, top producing agent, crushing it. And he doesn't nice. do FISBO calling. He wants to add it to his arsenal. I think that's really cool. Yeah. Um, so he'll probably be there. Um, so shout out to Richard again. And if you guys are looking to sign up, we have it down in the comments section. The link, I believe, is for the Everest Prospecting School. Mm-hmm. Um, if you guys have uh, some time on that day or you don't, I suggest making that time. Come by. Learn to do what Alma does. Yep. And uh, convert some deals. I mean, hey, he, here's the thing, guys. Every master was once a disaster, right? So when you start out, you're going to be a disaster. If you suck at FISBO calls, guess what? When I did, when I first started, I sucked. Yep. Something fierce. It was 100 contacts, not 100 calls, 100 contacts to every appointment when I started I doing it. this. And I just kept building and building and building and fixing and changing and adjusting my arsenal so that we could create where it's like, it's, and I'll, I'll just be candid. I mean, this, I'm not trying to like toot my own horn, but here's the reality very seldom do people tell me no. Very seldom. It is super, super, super rare. Like it's probably a one at one to two out of a hundred yeah. that well, people that actually are like, no, don't come to my house. No, I don't want you to yeah. explore this possibility. It's very rare because if you approach them with love and, and intention, you're intending to help them, mm-hmm. you're going to get a positive result every time. Yeah. And that's how it is w- w- when you master your craft. Oh, totally. You know what I mean? And I'm, I'm thinking back at it going, when I began calling barely, mm-hmm. the phone would ring and people would hang up and I'd be like, oh crap, they picked up. <laughs> I, I'd hang up. Yeah. I was so like, you know what I mean? It's yeah. you're going out of your, um, out of your comfort, comfort zone. zone. But in order yeah. to grow, you got to be uncomfortable. Yeah. Um, and I know I would call I get on the phone. I'd start mumbling like no other man. I'd be on the phone like uh, 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 crap. And they're like, "Are you okay?" <laughs> I'm like, I've done that, dude. I've done that. I've done that. I've done that. And I, 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 and I, and I would just sit there, there <laughs> and uh, but I would just call and call and call. And then I had people around me that were calling as well. Mm-hmm. Then I would sit back and see how they call. How do they call? You know. Yeah. And I would take all that in and go, I can say, "Okay, cool. I like I like what he did there. I don't like what, what he did there." let's take that and then call it and then apply it to my call. Right. And then I would do that little by little by little. Mm-hmm. And then I got better and better and better. But you're right. It was like for every hundred people that you call, for example, 
typically you get like that one or two. <laughs> you're like, man, those are not good numbers, you know. Yep. But on the beginning, that's just the way it is. It's part. It's part of the process, you know. Right. And then later on, you get to you know one for every eighty, one for every sixty, one for fifty, mm -hmm. one twenty. You know, like I think on Saturday when, when we called, I think we called like fifteen people. Yeah. Um, out of the fifteen, I think six, seven picked up roughly. Yeah. We set three appointments. Yeah. Right you know there, you I mean? go. Oh. But it's like the old me, you know, four or five years ago, that wouldn't have happened. You right. Know what I mean, so. Yep. Yep. Skills are critical, guys. Get your skills. That's why it's so important to to take the time, spend the money. And go to something like a prospecting school. I agree. Yeah. Because that's where you learn the things that people have spent years putting together, like myself, years failing, like what you did. Yep. And that's where they actually put it. You, you can model what they did. So you don't have to go through what they, they went through. Yeah. You can cut the line by years and years and years in your business, learn the skills immediately rather than trying to build up and build. Because back in my day when we started, we didn't have coaches and coaching companies that were of this caliber that had these high level results. It was all a bunch of hacks that sold real estate 50 years ago. Exactly. So it's like now you have a real estate company. I actively sell every day. I took a buyer out today for my, my wife who does our buyer team yeah. and which I almost never do. I never, you know, and I, I went and listed a house yesterday. So it's like every single day I'm doing this is this is my business. This yeah. is my primary form of income is my real estate career because it's so freaking profitable. Our overhead is so low. Yeah. You're bringing you're bringing skills to the table and then all of a sudden they pay you money to have skills. You exactly. Know? It's a win-win so, for everybody. It is. Yeah, I like that. And actually uh prospecting school is coming up. You said it was Monday? Mhm. Mm Monday and Tuesday from 9 a.m. So if, if you so don't have any plans five, on Valentine's five, yeah. Day, come yeah, through. Right. <laughs> come through. Make sure those are done first. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> bring, bring your Valentine's. She yeah, can bring call her. He can yeah, call bring her. Whoever. She'll love it. Whoever they are. Um, I did want to say uh, we do have an event coming up. I believe it's in April, correct? Daniel, can you tell us the date on that? April 26th through the 28th. It's the Everest. Elevate. Elevate. Yeah. You know what? The names. I love the names. Yes. I love the names. They change every so often. We just did Climb. Climb was amazing. Climb was amazing. Go. That was a oh, really yeah. cool event. <laughs> climb was so yeah. good. I don't know how many tears I, I shed that day. I know, man. Those, it's like Those three days. <laughs> it's climb, climb is like that event where you, you're you working on yourself, yeah. your inner self. All of your all of the drunk monkeys that are on your shoulder, you learn how to get rid of them. You know, all of your... All of your hesitations you overcome mm -hmm. mentally. Yeah. All your it's the mental emotional game. That's what I love about climb. Elevate is really cool because, which is this April April twenty sixth through the twenty eighth. Elevate's really cool because it's it's kind of more of a technical. You get into a lot more technical type stuff. Like, you know, um, I spoke at the climb event, and I spoke more of like the emotional mental game. Whereas this next event, it'll be more like skills, skill building. Yeah. So it'll be like, okay, here's how and what you say versus here's who you are so this is the the, the elevator is really cool because it's more of like a workshop type environment yeah i like that yeah dan you created a, a quick little commercial right we're gonna take a quick commercial break guys about 56 seconds something like that one minute uh dan can you play that for the guys All right, guys, that was our first commercial break ever. That was awesome. Daniel, are we, are we back? Oh, we're back. Okay. I feel like we're legit over here, man. It's good. Yeah, pretty funny. <laughs> Daniel was like, uh, I look at Daniel, I'm like wiping my face. He's like, <laughs> I'm like you're alive. I'm like, huh? I'm like breaking into my burrito <laughs> over here, dude. Like, oh, I'm so hungry. Yeah. Yeah, we don't want to be too technical Speaking over of here. which, I highly recommend Zhao Asian Cafe. Oh, I'm yeah, not sponsored man. by them. They are freaking amazing. 
they have the uh, the green burrito. No, it's like a yeah, it's like a um, they call it their uh, bah mi wrap, and it, they wrap like rice noodles and or rice uh, meat, all the stuff that's in their like Asian bowls. Yeah, they'll stick it in a wrap. So this is like eating an Asian bowl, but it's in a wrap, and it's just so dope. <laughs> Because I'm from California, you know, we eat burritos yeah. and stuff. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, this is my Asian wrap burrito. It's delicious. <laughs> All right. While you're enjoying your uh, burrito, I'm going to go ahead and play some background music. But uh, just real quick, Alma, when did you start dialing and calling? Was it as soon as you started in real estate? Immediately, yeah. Almost uh, almost 20 years ago. Oh, wow. Yeah. So this is a long time. Yep. And I would hand dial every night. I'd start at 7 p.m. And I would go till 9 p.m. during the summer. Wow. And then I would start at 6 and go till 8 in the winter hours because they're changing the, yeah. in the feel of the time. Yeah. And then I, I've i just dedicated four to five days a week, Monday through Friday. I don't work Saturdays and I don't work Sundays. I almost haven't at all through my whole career. If I have a buyer or something like that, every once in a while, my wife will take a buyer out on the weekends. Pretty rare because they know that we're available for them during the week. Yeah. And a lot of them just make time during the week. So that gives us a lot more freedom. Wow. So That's awesome. Well, lot, I, I, lot feel like, I feel like you got to have that balance too, you know. Mm -hmm. um, I know before when I was, you know, a lot more, you know, active, you know, I'm still active. But it was literally, I would go on through Sunday as well. I mean, typically Sunday, I, I would try to keep that day off. Uh huh. But it was Monday through Saturday. Mm -hmm. And then you know, I would have that one day to just recharge. Right. And um, I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing, to be honest with oh, you. Oh, no. As no. Long, especially if you're hungry and you're ready to rock, dude, take yeah. advantage of it. Like, yeah. I'd probably say my first maybe, what, four or five years, it was constantly Monday through Saturday, no mm -hmm. question about it. And then Sunday was my chill day. Uh, but then later on, you know, now you know now now that I have a daughter, for example, mm -hmm. you know, it's typically Saturday. Things change. Things you know? change. You know, your priorities <laughs> change where, you know, uh, Monday to Friday, we'll do that all day long. But I want to be able to spend that, you know, a little bit of time with her that I do, you know, get – so it just depends on where you're at in, in, in your in your life and your career. You know, totally. if, if you're barely coming up, you don't have any responsibilities. You don't have any kids. You don't have any family. You know, you don't have a whole lot to really worry about. Then, dude, work six, yeah. seven days a week. That's what I tell people. Like, because people, you know, everybody talks about balance. Because you talked a little bit about balance, right? And and if you it, in real estate, there isn't really a balance. There's not really balance. Yeah, yeah. Ba I heard uh, it was best put the other day by Luke Rin. He goes, balance is bullshit. Yeah. He goes, rhythm. You want rhythm. Yep. And so if you're in a rhythm, go with the rhythm, man. Yep. I mean, go with the rhythm of what, what your life looks like, how you can prospect, when you can prospect. I mean, right now, my life, my rhythm, um, I usually get to my office at about 9 o'clock. Of course, I'm taking calls all morning usually. And then um, I hit the phones, yep. and I just prospect. And I do that four days a week at least, and sometimes five. And if I didn't reach my goals for that week, I'll go in on a Saturday morning or something and just you know whip it out. And just make it happen. But it, that's a good rhythm for me. I have four daughters. Yeah. You know, I have a big yard where there's a lot of maintenance. I have a big house. And so I'm always like juggling life and then also a career. So if you have good rhythm, you won't see where your real estate career starts and your family begins. It, it'll be intertwined. Exactly. You'll have a smooth rhythm. You'll have expectations clearly, clearly set for your family. One of the things that's tough with the real estate industry is identifying boundaries of time you know, like a job, yeah. like it's not a job, right? We don't go into work and clock in and clock out. Yeah. But if you can create the consistency and the rhythm, then the rhythm will kill balance all day or the week in a good way. It'll be much better. So uh, I couldn't agree with you more. Yeah. Could not, could not agree with you more. Yeah. Because <clears throat> yeah. so anyway. like, yeah, as, as long as you have that rhythm and, and that is the balance in my honest opinion. Totally. Yeah. Um, exactly. and, and it's interesting how it works because everything's kind of intertwined, yep. you know, within that. And it's like, next thing you know, you're out, you know, you're shown homes, you meet another client. And then your girlfriend or your, your, your wife calls you. You got to go out. Like everything kind of just falls into place, mm -hmm. you know. Um, I feel like it's difficult if you have two extremely op opposite people. Right. You know, that's why I love the fact that, you know, me, me and my, my, my girlfriend, you know, she does hair, for example. Uh -huh. So she's grinding in the morning. So mm -hmm. she'll do her thing throughout the day. I'll do my thing throughout the day. And then later on in the evening. Right. We'll, we'll link up and, and get together, you know. Yep. Um, you know, we're not bugging each other throughout the day going, hey. How are you? How's this? <laughs> Which is totally fine. You know what I mean? Right. But right. like, we're both grinding. Like right now we're grinding, you yeah. know? Hey babe, I'll talk to you later. Yep. So, yep. yeah. Do you guys do, uh, I mean, because the climb event was the way it was, cause it, I thought it was going to be real estate. And like you said, it was totally about building you up and, and, right. and be becoming the best you. It was really, really awesome. Right. Um, 
does Everest Coaching have that type of coaching? Do, yeah. Do they, okay. Yep. So they as a matter of fact, the, en- the entire culture is built upon that method. That if you're not if you're not whole on the inside, you can't be whole on the outside for your clients, for your family, your children. You can't for your spouse. And so you're going to be crap at real estate if all you're doing is trying to grind, 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 yeah. grind without having your insides corrected. Yeah. You know, and I, you know, the word grind, <clears throat> I, I don't resonate with it. I like build, you yeah. know, to me, build is makes more sense. I'm building. I'm in, I'm building. Um, grinding hurts. You know, yeah. I don't like grinding. Grinding hurts. It actually gives me like, you get like these weird feelings in different spots in my body when I say the word grind. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but it's like, you know, so if you have that rhythm, you want to build your intention is I'm going to go build, build, build to me. That's, that's, that's what resonates with me. So whatever resonates with you, whatever gives you that kind of bump in the ass makes you want to go to work, yeah. makes you want to succeed. Hey, go with it. You know, it's another thing of rhythm, but yes, to answer your question, it all happens on the inside yep. first. You got to be okay. You got to get rid of some of those traumas. Everybody's a little broken. You know, we all have traumas in our life. Yeah. We got to work on those and fix those. Not fix them, but work your way through them. Because sometimes some of them will never be fixed. But you have to be okay with them. You know, and you have to be okay moving forward and make them part of your story and part of your purpose and part of your reason. Even though you may have had a very, you know, terrible trauma like, you know, a yeah. lot of us have had. Yeah. So. Look at Alma over here. Motivational speaker. I know, right? <laughs> so, so good. So, so, awesome. so poetic. Yeah, so poetic. Uh, okay, well, let's start, uh, let's start dialing again. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do this. Good to me. Fill in another, another uh, 15 grand right here, baby. Let's know. <laughs> All right. I'm going to redial. Log back in here. Fix that. Yeah, time. It, if you leave it on, you don't hang up your phone. It won't time out on you. But if your phone is hung up, the system will time out. All right. Log back in here. <clears throat> it's slightly faster on a PC versus. And there is a, I've noticed too, going full wireless on this, there is a little delay. Whereas typically that won't be the case with this system. It's so funny, dude. That was the very first call, the very first lead on the list come on daniel just move the camera <laughs> all right let me reset this thing. <clears throat> and that's the thing i'm actually i think i don't even think i'm working on the wi-fi i think i'm just working on my cell service on this thing and it works great it's a fantastic system nice all right Bring it up. new leads available let's put those in there we like those. And then I'm curious to know, so whenever you are calling, do you, do you have a goal? You know, I mean, I, I mean, I mean, you have, you have a goal obviously, but mm-hmm. what is your goal kind of per day, per week? Two, two appointments a day, four days a week. Okay. Yep. So eight, if I get eight appointments a week, dude, I'm stoked. I'm on track to reach my goals. Good. And yeah. Cause with the, uh, with the, with that ratio, um, this year I'll clear well over 2 million yeah, in easy. commissions in this market, which is so, damn good, which is damn good. But here's the thing. I had to find my rhythm. To, to be able to do that successfully yeah. and not get burnt out, not feel like crap and have, cl- cl- you know, set clear expectations for my family time and my kids and stuff yeah. like yeah. that. So for me, that's what it means. When you're highly skilled, you can do that. You can say, look, all I need is an hour a day, four days a week to make these calls. And then the rest will fall into place. Yeah. And everybody, like I was saying, everybody's a little broken. Everybody's got issues. 99% of your w- problems in your life will go away if you prospect. <laughs> yep. Because most of our issues are, are you know, uh, I'm not, I'm not working, I'm not getting any clients. I, I'm low on money. Uh, my bills are piling up. Uh, my credit cards are maxed Just out. Yep. And the, the funny thing All is, all that too, crap. Most yeah. people is that's the one thing they won't do. Right. And I'll see it happen month over month, year over year with people. And they're like, yeah, I, ju- I just feel like I'm, I'm out of it. I don't yep. feel like I'm here. I don't feel like um, it works. I, I don't feel like it works or mm-hmm. this or that. And they do. Everything, yep. But call, yeah. Your dreams don't work unless you do, folks. Exactly. Okay. So that's the one thing too. Like you know, me as well. Before when I began calling, I was mumbling and stuttering uh-huh. and didn't have a whole lot of money or this or that. But I'm like, cool. 
let's do this. Right when I got a little taste of, hey, this works, I was hooked. Yep, At that point on, I was hooked and I knew that I worked. And just going through that, that helped build me up. It helped build up my confidence. Because the in, income over the effort was so high. Exactly. Then yeah. you get to the point where you expect it. You expect months of 20 grand, then 30 grand, then 40 grand, and 50 grand. I, mean, I remember having Unknown this. caller. Uh oh, here we go. Right. That's us. That's us. That's just dialing in. Yeah, you're right, though, Alan. I mean, that's absolutely true. Okay, we're dialing, baby. Let's we're go. On. Let's go. Let's make it happen. <clears throat> Let's see if we can get two for two. We can. I need to know everything. Who and what and where I need everything. Hello? Oh, hold on one sec. Sorry, my phone's disconnected here from my headset. Okay, you there? You there? I am. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, my phone disconnected from my yeah. headset. Anyways. Yeah. Hey, just giving you a call. Um, I was calling about uh, you had a home for sale a little bit ago here on Crestdale. Is it still for sale? Uh, kind of. You know, we're just testing the market with a little for sale by owner. It's not something we're super serious about. Okay. My name's Alma, just so you know. I'm sure you've had a ton of agents calling you trying to list your home, right? <laughs> Yeah, it's not. Yeah, we're not really. That's not where we're going with it right now. We've we've had a couple investment firms reach out and talk about full full price offers, but we're still crunching numbers and whatnot. But. Yeah. Okay. Well, fortunately, the purpose for my call is I just sold a couple other properties not far from you there, so I was just calling to get some info on this one. Is that okay? Oh, good. Sure. Okay. So tell me a little bit about it. How many bedrooms does it have? Uh, six bedrooms, three oh, bathrooms, does. three living rooms, two two kitchens. Okay. So six bath, six bedrooms. You uh, said three uh, bathrooms. Yeah. Yeah, three full baths. Okay. Perfect. And then how how many square feet is it? Thirty seven hundred. Oh, nice. Okay. So good sized. And then, um, what what year is the house? When was it built? Uh, 2014. Okay. Perfect. And then, um, have you done any upgrades or anything since 2014? Yeah. Yeah. We've, we've, uh, so it's got a, a, a we own the solar package on it. It was 21 nice. panel package. Um, we've got it all, a whole home backup generator. Oh, wow. 22 kilowatt generator. That's cool. So, I guess we'll be the only ones lit up on the hill if the power goes out. <laughs> You're going to be a big target to the yeah, leaders. But it, it'll run. A, <laughs> I know I have to be careful about that, but it'll, but it, it'll run the whole house. That's very nice. Yeah. So just get blackout curtains so you can um, keep all the lights on. <laughs> it, that's not a bad idea, actually. <laughs> I'm full of uh, not bad so, ideas. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. And then okay. we, we added a 48 by 30 sports court, um, nice. you know, added, you know, it's full hundred percent landscape and nice, nice shed in the back basketball court. Beautiful. Yeah. Did you, now, and were you the original builder owner? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We own it. We've owned it from the beginning. Okay. What's gotten you thinking about considering selling it? Just the wacky market we're in. That's pretty much it. I, mm -hmm. you know, we love that area, and I mean, just the way it's situated, it's probably the best best lot up there because we can use all of our land, and we have unblockable views from Mount Nebo to the Thanksgiving Point. <laughs> I mean, just it's pretty awesome. Yeah, I, I I love my spot too, but man, this market has really got me thinking about that that equity. You know. Yeah. Okay. So it's just it's just the idea of potential financial freedom that helps us. I mean, just cause us to put it on there. But if you do sell this one, where are you going to next? Love to stay in the area. My wife's parents live in Santa Quin as well. Okay. So it's not like we're trying to go far. Just if if it was if someone is in that position where they were willing to pay over market value for it, and then you know. Yeah. 
maybe we'd think about it, but we're not, we're not super serious right now. Just about everything's going, in my opinion, over market value. So that's not really hard to do. And where did you have right. it priced at or where did you, where do you need it priced at in order to make it worth it for you to sell? Yeah, we put it, we put it at 963, um, a little high. I mean, there's comps down the road that have sold for about 660, 680. Mm-hmm. Um, but again, it's, it's not, it's not worth it for us to uproot our family if it's not going to be a, a, a decent financial decision. Right. Yeah, that makes sense. Well, and you know, the interesting thing I see, and you've probably seen this in the marketplace too, is you'll see houses in a market like this that are selling in just a matter of days. And, you know, I always wonder, could they have gotten another, you know, 10, 15, $20,000 out of it, you know, because it sells so fast. Yeah, I don't know. And, I, you know, I, there's not much comparable to my, ours. So, you know, I'm, I'm looking north. I see, you know, properties that may be just a little bit more square footage, but same amount of land, and mm-hmm. you know, going for 1.3 million. And I'm like, oh, my goodness, yep. this is not. Well, and it, you know, it has a lot to do with the Again, demand, not, you know, and the, the lack of inventory right now. People are paying sure. cash and they're waiving appraisal and they're, you know, because they're coming from California, right. you know, they sell their Huntington Beach house for $3 million that was, you know, 1,900 square feet. <laughs> and they're like, man, I don't care yeah. if this house yeah, doesn't exactly. value right. I'm going to buy it cash and could care less about appraisal. So it happens all the time. Right. So, yeah, so there's enough of those people looking around and I've, like I said, I've gotten some calls from investors who are interested, and like mm-hmm. I'm not really looking to get aggressive if the right situation came along. Which for us, honestly, our preference would be, you know, someone that's wanting to get the property but not necessarily move in right away and lease back to us. Yeah, that's actually really common. We just did one so, in Draper like that, um, and uh, yeah, sim- yeah, same scenario. They ju- they just it was a six month process. Actually, they, they were waiting till their home was finished and then, you know, we were able sure. to, to get them in there, but it took six months, but, it, but the buyer just understood that they just stayed in their previous house until it was ready. And then they moved in. So it ended up being really good. So you're, you're yeah. going to stay, yeah. you're going to stay here in Santa Quinn then if you do. Yeah, we like the South Utah County area. We're small town folk. Okay. Yeah. I, I like Everything's it blowing up. So nothing, nothing small town anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Well, what do you think? I mean, you, um, you know, your neighborhood probably better than I do. I've sold there for about 20 years, but in, in reality, neighborhoods and the markets and everything changed so much. What do you think? Ideally, what do you think your home is, is worth? I honestly think, you know, all things considered, if we were to list it, I think we could sell it for seven ninety five, okay. and and someone would pay for it. I'm would sure. That, would that be worth if it? If we to, were to if we were ready that? and willing to move. No, not at all. Okay, not yeah. at all. Well, let's. I, I mean, just let me ask you this. I, just I don't, because of the, you know, you where do you go and buy something equivalent. <laughs> right. Exactly. Are so, you, would anyway. you stay in a, in the same t- kind of size of home or would you downsize and simplify? Well, we, we probably want to look for similar size cause we got six kids and yeah. they're just grown into their teenage years. So the bigger bodies, more food to eat, <laughs> <laughs> need to spread out. Yeah. There was eight of us when I was growing up. So, so. I understand that process. Oh, okay. Well, let me ask you this. I don't, I don't know if this would work for you or not. It, it may not, but I mean, obviously you've expressed there's a certain amount of cash that you need to get out of the property in order to make it worth it for you to sell. And like I said, this may or may not make sense, but if we could figure out a way like we've done for some of your other neighbors there to, to sell the property, net you the amount that you need, you know, put in your pocket the amount of cash you're trying to get, um, even after real estate fees and stuff like that. I mean, you'd be open to at least exploring that, right? Yeah, yeah, and that's why I put it out there because I'm open to conversation. We just just wanted to be upfront that we're not getting too aggressive or emotionally attached right now. Right. Uh, yeah. I think it's on a lot of people's minds where they're looking at their house and they're like, "Dang, I've got more equity than I've ever had." Yep. Yep. So, well, let's just, do this. I mean, if you're if you're at least open to exploring it, um, 
I'll actually be right over by you on, um, let's see here, actually on Friday, Friday tomorrow. Like I, I could pop in like around 4.30 if something like that would work for you, do a quick walkthrough, and then between now and then I can do a little research and just kind of see where your value is. That way if you do decide to list it and sell it, you can at least have some good information. Um, yeah, and I, again, I, so I, I appreciate the, I, I'm really, it's just the awareness. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. I mean, you're welcome to drive by. I, 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 I'm not really going to invite too many people into our home right now. <laughs> I mean, sure, we'll that's get, fair. Yeah. if we get serious about it, we'll get a photographer. And, yeah. And I'm, so and just so you know, I, I, I probably won't spend my it that way, but just so you know, I don't have any high pressure sales pitch or any of that junk. As a matter of fact, I'm listing a property, um, tonight. 6 30 and i've been talking to this guy for two years and he finally and you know sure. I'm, I'm super low pressure it's just an awareness thing it's just giving basically serving you first and then if we end up working together that's great you know if not no big deal at least you have some good information for your for your future but you know i'll be right over there by you if yeah. you're open at least open to you know let me take a quick walk through if not i i i will also be over there on monday so whatever works better for you yeah, I'm not probably not tomorrow. Um, okay. But yeah, I mean, if you wanted to call Monday, I'd be, we could check on that. Okay. Yeah, let's do that. I'll put you down. Let's see. Monday's Valentine's oh. Day, so I want to get get done a little bit earlier. But I have I could I'll, I'll just carve out like around two o'clock for you, and then I'll call you Monday morning, and then that actually is probably better because I don't have a little more time to get do some numbers on it. And then if it makes sense for us to meet, I'll okay. I'll say hey, let's meet. Um, at two, if not, then I'll be candid with you. I won't, I won't burn your time or mine on it. Okay. So. Hey, sorry to cut you off. I got to hop into a meeting. Sounds great. Oh. No, that works. I'll look forward to seeing you on Monday at two. And if we can work together on it and help you sell it. Awesome. If not, no big deal. And what was your name? Brad. You're Brad. Okay. I'm Alma and this is my cell phone. So if you have any questions, you can call me, but I'll just plan on calling you on Monday morning to confirm. Okay. Thanks for the call. Okay. Thanks, Brad. Appreciate you. Talk to you soon. Okay. Bye-bye. Okay, bye. He's so chill. He's so chill. All these people I paid to do this. Uh, all these people. <laughs> Look, bro. You, when you said chill, you're so right. Because yeah. <laughs> Alma's tone gets lower and lower. <laughs> yeah. just so relaxed at the end i feel like you're gonna put the guy to sleep but it's good though then you're not like you mat you mirror match right oh you love the hair huh <laughs> but you mirror and match and we talk about that all the time with our yeah. agents when we're doing calls with them it's like you have to mirror and match and that guy was so relaxed yeah that's how you like him yeah he was chill because i don't want to be i don't want to be aggressive i yeah. don't want to have too much energy when he doesn't yeah um you know a lot of people are like, oh you want to have energy okay just to be candid, I have a ton of energy inside my body right now, mm -hmm. but I'm not expressing it obnoxiously. I'm yeah. not expressing it physically. I'm just reserving it for when it's needed. Yeah, there's a time and place for everything. Yeah. And when I'm making these calls, nine times out of 10, this, that'll, that is how the calls will go. That's why the first two leads on the list we set appointments with. And they're all brand new listings on market. So nine times out of 10, that will happen if you just reserve your energy for the right times. If he started to get a little bit more worked up, man, just like Ryan, the guy I set first, yeah. Ryan got a little worked up, a little, you know, frustrated. You could tell he was pissed off. Okay. I started using that energy and started to match him. This guy, Brad, totally chill, calm, relaxed. We're not really in a rush. Okay. Yeah. Neither am I. I'm yeah. here to serve you. I'm not here to tell you what to do with your house and your, your equity. Yeah. I'm here to serve you. If it's better for you to keep the house and rent it and sell it in three years, I'm your guy. Cool. I'll be here for you in three years. Between now and the, when you sell it in three years, we'll be I'll, I'll be sending you voice messages and text messages, just checking in on you. And then by the time we're ready to go, like the guy I'm listing tonight here in Cottonwood Heights, three years. I think it's three years, maybe two years on this wow. guy. But crazy. You know, we always have this thing like, oh, I got I to sell. No, the next guy. Don't just up your skills so you're not worried if this guy sells in three years or three months. Yeah. Up your skills so that you have others that are selling right now. You have other homes that are selling. You're not desperate for the next commission. Yeah. 
So. Well, that, that's the key point of consistency and discipline. I mean, you know, that, that took me back when <clears throat> I know I closed a couple of people. I think one was about two or three years. I think even maybe four years. It was, it was weird. Oh, I'm looking wow. through the notes going, oh, I talked to them early on in my career. And then it was three or four years later that they requested a showing. And then we go out, take a look at it, and we, we close that deal. It's building then, that pipeline. Yeah. And then I had another one as well where I didn't, I mean, I called her. And then maybe a year later, she's like, hey, Alan, thank you so much for sending me all the property. You've been staying in touch with me. Um, we, we are fi- we're finally ready to go. And I'm over here going, uh, who are you talking to? I don't remember you don't know, who they were, huh? You yeah. know, but you did your part. You mm-hmm. put the wheels in motion. You got you got their hot sheet, you know, set up, and they're receiving properties from you. That way, it's a constant reminder of who you are, and that you're give, 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 mm-hmm. give. And then you know, fast forward, you know, a year, two, three later, that will happen. That's mm-hmm. what I feel like a lot of newer agents don't realize is they want that quick turnaround. They want that quick deal right right yeah. away, right out of the gate. Yeah, that will happen. You that know what instant I mean? gratification. Like that happened with, with you, I think. I, I, th- I think two two weeks into calling, you had your first appointment. Yeah. And the guy's like, "Hey, I'm right here at the house. I want to take a look at it." You're like, "Uh, okay, I'm on the way down right now." Yeah. And it was at the time where you didn't even have your. You, I mean, you were still waiting for your access key. Yeah, I didn't even have access. <laughs> Alan had to go and act like yeah. a listing so, agent. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, but I had to come and just open the door. Yeah. You know, what I mean, to let to let you guys in, but. That that will happen, you know. So it comes down to consistency at the end of the day. Calling, calling, calling. Don't stop. Be and don't consistent. be prospect. Look, guys, if you're highly skilled and you're an ass, you're going to get the same results as if you're not highly skilled and you're an ass. So the key is don't be an don't ass. Don't be an ass. Yeah. Be nice to people. Be courteous. Look out for their best, best interest above your own, right? That's our fiduciary responsibility anyways, and you'll get great results. Yeah, like I'll, I'll – okay, I'm glad I'm glad you did that. You said that because that will happen a lot. Like I'll go out and look at a property with a client, Uh and if I can tell that it's a piece of shit, I will be honest with you. I'll be like, "Hey, just so you know, the foundation is cracked, or the roof is you know completely shot, or Mm -hmm. it needs a complete makeover, whatever it might be, or hey, it's it's overvalued." I see it so often where agents will typically sugarcoat it. They sugarcoat it. Oh, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's a great investment. Next thing you know, commission breath. And we all know a bunch of agents like that. Yeah. I've seen it multiple, multiple times, and I just, I don't, re- I don't re- resonate with people yeah, like that. Don't yeah. subscribe to it, man. Don't. Yeah, it's exactly. Yeah. We don't resonate with that action. Yeah. It smells like burrito in here. It does, uh, dude. It's so like, good. It's like Zao. <laughs> it's delicious. You guys need to try Zao. Yeah, g- give me a bite. No, just kidding. There all right. No, no, no. Let's start calling. <laughs> oh, let's go. Another girl. Let's do another one. Let's go. Ready. Let's see. Here we go at the top of the class on a roll, and it's time to run it up. Yeah, you know, maxed out, put the pedal to the floor. Hey, on a roll, here we go, here we go. Yeah, we win it. Like the music. Never see me coming on my landmine. Yeah, I ain't taking orders in command. Like, yeah, you about to see me. Time to pull a hat trick, Alma. One more. Hat trick. Oh, this, is, this is normal, man. That's why we make these calls to set appointments. Go. <laughs> Do it. Okay. Looks like actually, I think we're still connected. Sweet. There we go. <clears throat> and forwarded to an automatic voice message system. Eight zero. Those were literally the first two leads on the entire list, too. Oh wow. And you got both of them. Mm-hmm. Hi. Hey, I was calling about, uh, you had a home for sale a little bit ago over on Spyglass. Did you ever sell that? I do have it still for sale. We were under contract in the contract sale. Oh, okay. Are you, are you selling that for sale by owner? Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Um, my name's Alma. I'm with Century 21. I'm sure you've had a ton of agents calling you trying to list it, right? I've had about three hundred million, and I've asked <laughs> not to have those kind of calls during work. All right. Well, fortunately, the purpose for my call, I just sold a couple other properties not far from you there, and so I was just calling to get some info on this one. Is now a good time, or would you rather me call you later for it? Um, I can't take these kind of calls during work hours. I'm trying to work, and I'm like I said, you're like three hundred thousand one. If you'd like to call in the evening, and it's regarding a client you'd like to show. It to that's fine if you're asking me to list Perfect. i prefer you didn't call back oh that's fair that's totally fair um okay. what time what after Thank what you. time is best for you 
after five. After five. Okay, cool. And what was your name? Uh huh. Lori. You're Lori. Okay. My name's Alma. So I'll try to call you after five. I don't want to interrupt your work. Thanks right. so much. Sounds good. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Bye-bye. You got it. Okay. Bye bye. You you hung up right? Oh, she hung up. She hung up. She hung up. <laughs> so that's gonna get. See how heated she was? Oh, like yeah. she's like turns into a wretched person when she's pushed too oh, hard. She's mad. So here's the thing: she's probably not a wretched person. Just be clear. When you get so much activity and so many calls, and it's so frustrating yeah. to these people, just it's okay. Just call them after five. It's cool. Yeah, hey, it's okay. Yeah, I appreciate it. My name's Alma. I want to know because that's her contribu- Her in most of these calls, their name is their contribution to me. Mine back to them is my contribution to them. For that twenty seconds we're on the call, we're contributing to each other already. So that's why I always ask their name, even though I have it here in front of me. Yeah, it's Lori. My name's Alma. I'll call you after five. I don't want to disrupt your your work day. Yeah, I thought she hung up actually. Yeah, no, for, at yeah. first. I, yeah, I did too. I, I, almost, so too. I almost hit something that could have ruined really an appointment. <laughs> 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 I was gonna go. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Could you imagine if she was still on the call and I did that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I don't have any qualms about calling her back after five. Yeah. I could care less. So in my notes here, I'll just put boom, call back after five. No big deal. She's probably way more relaxed anyways. Cool. And that's it, man. That's all we got to do. Don't need to be jerks and try to force our way in. Don't need to, you know, and a lot of people are like, oh, try harder, you know, ask more questions. No, I mean, it, look, I'm here to help. I'm not here to like put her in a, into a corner and get her to say yeah. yes to something. I'm here for us to do business together. I don't want to freaking treat her like crap. Just like, any other business associate, you go to lunch or whatever, you don't want to treat them like crap when you're meeting them, yeah. you know? So treat them well. Treat them like you would treat a friend. If I had a friend t- tell me the same thing, Alma, please don't call me about this till after business yeah. hours. I would respect that. You know, my wife's at work or something, please don't call me till after business hours my boss gets mad. Cool, no big deal. Just treat them with respect. Yep. All right, let's see. So I'm going uh, to give that one a little disposition real quick. I need to know everything, who in the what and the where I need everything. Trust me, I hear what you're saying, but I like it's new what you're telling me. Okay, there we go. <clears throat> Hi, this is the Google Assistant. Can I ask what you're calling about? The house on Cedar View. Sorry, they can't take the call right now. Thanks, and goodbye. Thank you, and goodbye. On to the next. <laughs> technology. I really love technology. What? Please leave your message for... Not as much as you, you see. But I still really love technology. <laughs> Where's that from? Napoleon Dynamite. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. Hello. Hi. Hey, yeah. I was calling about uh, you had a home for sale on 910 South here in Provo. Yeah. Did that sell? I've got it under contract. Uh, can I help you with something? Are you a realtor? Or? Yep, just calling to see if it was still available. So you're already under contract, huh? We are under contract. Yeah, yeah. well, if it falls through, do you want me to call you back? Or? Yeah, that'd be great. Yep. If you can just say my number. It's My name's Alma. All right, thanks. I'm okay. with, with Century 20. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate you. Next. Hi, this is Clint. Leave me a message and I'll call you right back. Thanks. I will leave you a message. Hello. Hello. Hey, I was calling about, um, you had a home for sale a little bit ago here in Draper. Yeah, it's, it's not for sale anymore. Oh, okay. So you, d- you didn't sell it. You just took it off market? Yes. Okay, cool. Um, I, I may have talked to you before about Thank this. You. I've been looking in the area here for clients, but are you considering putting it back on anytime soon or, you, or are you not going to sell it? No, I, I'm not. I'm not interested. Thank you. No Thanks. Thanks so much. Okay, bye. 
By, by the way, Elma, what are the chances you have one actually right now in Draper? Draper, South Jordan, West <clears throat> Jordan, or Bluffdale, mm -hmm. uh, under three million. Probably I, above 5,000 square feet. You can buy mine for three million. I live <laughs> in Draper. Where are you at? Oh, Just perfect. Let's do it. Acre and a half. Hello? Oh, no. We're good. Yeah, I'll keep you posted. I'll, yeah, I'll look it up. Yeah. <laughs> That's I, my buddy. You know, um, yeah, we went. We, we, we actually do. Hi, this is Royal. Hi. Hey, I was calling about uh, you had a uh, property for sale a little bit ago in Springville. Are you, did you, is that yes. still for sale? It is to the lots. Uh, we've received earnest money on them. The uh, southeast lot and the south central lot, but the other two are are available. Okay, and there are those. Where are those located at? I don't know. Upper Whittemore. Upper Whittemore. Okay, I think that's out of the realm of where we were trying. Are you familiar with a, <laughs> a little bit? Yeah. Are you familiar with Left Fork of Hollow Creek? Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. so you if you go almost exactly five miles from the golf course, you'll see the entrance to the development. Oh wow! And then it's about three miles up the road to get to uh, that area. And there's a pin, a Google pin. Oh, on the you'll, ad once here. Once you get to the, uh, all right, yeah. Okay. And I, I'm actually going up Saturday morning at 11 a.m. and you're welcome to join me and, and uh, what I can your, show you around if you're interested. What are your lot uh, prices? Are they building lots as well? They're, um, we are moving property boundaries from lot 73, 74, 75, joining <sighs> those together and putting working with a county surveyor and planning and zoning to move into the south side of the 20-acre lot. And so they, they will be buildable lots. Okay. Uh, legal, legitimate, buildable lots when that's completed on the south 20 acre portion. Okay. And north 20 acre portion. Okay. So I'll 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 kind of keep this in in touch with you and just kind of keep. I'm an, I'm a local agent here. Um, gotcha. Just kind of keep an eye out. I've been in lot and land development for about almost 20 years now, and so I just uh, nice. wanted to kind of keep my eyes open for different lots and things like that that were available. So I saw Springville, so I thought sure. I'd give it a call and check it out. So, um, nice. Okay. And what was your name? <coughs> All right. I appreciate your call. Yeah, my pleasure. What was your name? Royal Chamberlain. Awesome. Great name. Okay. My name's Alma. Yeah. I'm with Century 21. Yeah. Good talking to you too. I appreciate your time. Okay. Yeah. Thanks Alma. You got it. Okay. Bye-bye. Take care. All right. So why? Where is Whittemere? That's what, that's why I didn't take the, the deal. So it's you. You go about forty five minutes south from Salt Lake, then you okay. turn left and go about thirty five minutes up the canyon. So it's quite a trek to get up there. It's a beautiful, beautiful area. It's up uh, Hobble Creek Canyon. Oh, okay. Left Fork, and you go all the freaking way up there. Okay. <laughs> it's way up there. I mean, there's no cell service up there in most spots. Like, it's uh, it's out there. That's okay. why. I, doesn't really make sense for me yeah. to identify that as an opportunity. Um, it looks like he's selling lots at 186,000 per. Which, so, is not, which is not too bad. No, it's not bad at all. Up, up there, it's pretty common for that okay. price point, just kind of because of how cumbersome it is sometimes, like yeah. in the winter time and stuff. It's yeah. very cumbersome up there. But it doesn't make sense for my business model where I'm at. I want to be within about 45 minutes of each one of my listings. Yeah, it makes sense. This takes me up over an hour. So, yeah, outside of my realm of desire to work with here it's funny because on the beginning mm -hmm. i would drive anywhere but then as you get busy and busy you're able to are down my yeah first, my first listing was actually in bernal oh was it wow. bernal wow it was like three three and a half hours away yeah and you better believe i drove there i, was, yeah, I was pumped up like yep. i got my first listing well and here's the thing most people most people will make their area too small yeah like oh i'm salt lake county no why not utah county it's 30 minutes away yeah. you won't drive 30 minutes for a fifteen thousand dollar twenty thousand dollar forty five thousand yep. dollar commission yeah are you nuts yep go take it you're licensed in the state of utah yep. go freaking take it and so but but yeah my boundaries are about 45 minutes um anything over that is it's it doesn't make sense for me because i can just go get something closer yeah i got you yeah 
So, but I highly, when it's your first or your set, dude, take everything, go, go get it, dude. I don't care if it's in freaking Vernal. I don't care if it's in Brigham city, dude, go like get it. The, the, the funny thing is to the sad thing is that one never sold. Oh really? <laughs> I, I went on that appointment with actually Aaron Pearson. I'm, I'm, I'm sure he'll, he'll remember this one. Uh, we show up and the client was out of state. I think she was in California. She was uh, like you know, an, an, an old, older person and she was just trying to get rid of it. And I knew some people here in town, but anyway, long story short, we show up over there. I got my sign up already. I got the contract signed, everything, you, you name it. And we show up, and I'm knocking on the door, and somebody answers. I'm like, okay, I thought it should be vacant, but okay. Uh-huh. There's a lady there. She was pregnant. She had her baby, you know, I mean, her little, I think it was a little daughter with her. And I'm like, hi, I'm just here to sell the home. She's like, I live here. I'm like, what do you mean you live here? She's like, yeah, I'm renting it from, you know, this person here. Ethel. Like, Okay, um, it's actually some random guy, believe it or not. Oh, was that? <laughs> yeah. And then um, I I call my client. I'm like, hey, I'm just over, I'm over here trying to put the sign up. What, what do I do? Pretty much. She's like, yeah, I'm not renting it out to anybody. Oh no so way! Come to find <laughs> out. Come to find no out. Way. Come to come to find out. One of the neighbors actually. <laughs> He was sell. I mean, re- renting the property illegally <laughs> for like the last year or He's two. He's renting it out. Yeah, and then coincidentally, he actually pulls up. He's like, "Who are you?" And I'm like, "Who are you?" <laughs> you know, who are you? And, and Pearson's with you. Who's yeah, intimidating? And then he's over here talking to his client, like, yeah. "Don't worry about it. Everything's fine." And I'm like, "Wait a minute. Let me call the actual owner on the phone." So we went back and forth, and you know, got got it all straightened out. But he was illegally renting that property. Somebody out. else's property. Yeah, and then we wow. go. You know, eventually. We were there. We, we were going to call the cops, but we didn't. But we probably should have, honestly. Um, so we went, you know, checked out the property. And then but prior to going there, I met with my client. You know, we had a rough idea on value. Uh-huh. I think right, right around that time was around 200-ish. And by the time we got there, I come to find out half of the house in the back is actually burned down. Oh, wow. A fire went off in the whole back. So the whole back portion of the home was burnt um, was that caused by the renter or previous? I have no idea. Alan, wow. what, 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 was, what, were you, what were you listing it at? Just curious. Uh, right around the low 200s. Okay, low 200s in Vernal? Yeah, in Vernal. Is, was it a good size house? It was pretty big. Yeah. Yeah, I don't remember exactly, but I think around 3,000 square feet. It was you know, oh, bright, wow. yeah. bright blue. But the, here's another in- interesting thing, too. It's like, okay, cool. If, it was, if it's burned down, you know, if it's not too bad, it was in the attic area, so that can be fixed. Right in front of the door, the front door, maybe about 5, 10 feet out, uh-huh. I look and I'm like, is that a, is that a tombstone? <laughs> and I'm not, I'm not kidding with you. I'm like, that, that, that can't be real. Can't be that can't be real. There's no way. I walk over there. It has the name and the date. And I'm like, I don't think anybody would want a tombstone right in, in front, of their, front of their, like you're walking into a door going, Hey, hi, hi, Bob. And then you walk in. Uh-huh. And, um, so anyway, we went back and forth on that one. They took about a month or two to move out. You know, we didn't want to kick them out, especially cause, cause she did have kids. Um, Oh so, my goodness. And she was kind that of a victim so in that process too. Yeah. That well, so on top of that too, then eventually her boyfriend pull, or a pull, boyfriend or husband pull up and I could tell they're on, on something okay, too. Okay, here we mm-hmm. go. All right. <laughs> no, no, went, You're taking this too far away. Yeah, went, but that was my first deal in real estate. Uh-huh. And you better believe after, you know, I'm, we're going way off topic here, but you better believe that after I left, we're in the car with me and Aaron. And uh-huh. I forgot who else went with us. And I'm like, are all of my deals going to be like that? Like, <laughs> are they really all like that? Yeah. I want to know about the tombstone, dude. Oh, my gosh. All right, we're resuming. I wonder if that house is still up. Still there. <clears throat> fall down? We eventually dropped the price. Call has been forwarded oh, to an automated voice messaging system. <clears throat> That's crazy. I want, I want to get one more in. Where I did, I did I, find a tombstone in the backyard once. You what? A tombstone in the backyard. Really? Yeah, they had messed up on it. So that... Hello? Hello? Hi, hey, I was calling about, uh, yes. you had a home for sale on Tamarack here in Cedar Hills a little bit ago. Did you sell that? Yeah, I do. I, it has not been sold, no. Okay, and you're selling that for sell by owner, is that right? No, I have a realtor. I had just made a change on Zillow, and that was the only thing it let me do. And then uh, I went ahead and got a hold of a realtor and signed up. So. Oh, good for you. Good. Okay. He should be releasing that, putting it on the MLS and everything as of today or yesterday, I would I thought. Beautiful. Who did you end up listing with? Um, his name is Matthew Stone. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, Matt's a great guy. He'll be pleased. Oh, that's good to hear. <laughs> okay, well, thanks so much. I appreciate your time. I'll just look for that online. All right, you have a good one. You as well. Okay, bye-bye. Sure, bye. All right. So, Alma, just so I know, when it's dialing, uh-huh. you know the answer because the screen 
activates, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. Zero, one, eight, zero. You're three. getting quick at that, man. Yo, then we can bump the music. Hello? Hey, this is Paul. Leave me a voicemail and I'll call you back. So question, do, do, you, do you ever leave voicemails? I have an automatic voicemail. Okay, good. Yeah, I just push a button it leaves it. Or it leaves it automatically if it's got the right type of system. This music just never gets old to me. Oh, it doesn't, man. I like it. That's groovy. Hi, thanks for calling. I'm not able to take your call right now. But if you... Hi, this is Chip Fowler. Please leave me a message and I'll call you back. It's another one right up by that other last one. I've sold like... Hello? Please leave your message for 80... I sold like three houses on that same road, Tamarack. Well, what, what, where's that? In at? Cedar Hills. Okay. Utah. Yeah. That's like, I've sold so many homes up in that neighborhood. Google yeah. subscriber you have called is not that available. Road, that road in, in general is, I've sold a ton of homes just on that one road. Hello? Hi. Hey, I was calling about, uh, you had a home for sale a little bit ago here in Eagle Mountain. Did you? Are you still selling that? Oh, yeah. It's been sold. Okay. No, it's been sold. Okay. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Okay. Thank okay, you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Here we go. Hello? Ryan Corbin. At the tone, please record. For a second, I thought that was the same Ryan. It's a different Ryan. I don't know what we already said. <clears throat> Hello? Hello? Hi. Hey, I was calling about uh, you had a home for sale, a unit for sale here in Mill Creek a little bit ago. Uh, yeah, it's uh, under contract. Okay, just check in. Thanks so much. I appreciate it. Yeah. Okay, bye. Okay, thank you. So I'm going to put, because he's it's under contract, I'm just going to put that he didn't answer. That that way my dialer will call him Smart. back again because he may fall through. Yeah. So any of them that are like, oh, we're under contract, I don't delete them or, or trash them. I keep them in the system. I just call them back later and check in again. Okay. Because 50% of the time in a for sale by owner transaction, people will fall, uh, the buyers will fall yeah. through. So. Oh, wow. Here we go. Hello? Hi. Hey, I was calling about, uh, you had a home for sale a little bit ago here in Spanish Fork. Is that still for sale? It is, but there are two homes at 15 and a half acres. Sell okay. That okay. And you're selling that for sell by owner, is that right? Um, we do have a, a real estate agent as of now, but um, we can talk with him and see the contract with him is about up. So. Oh, gotcha. Okay. How long has it been on market? Um, two years. About Around two years. Two years. All right. Sounds like you have an imposter speaking for you in there. <laughs> oh, he's it's my husband must be in the car. So. I didn't think your voice got that deep that quick. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. Yeah, you never know. But, yeah, right. so that's what it is. Okay. So I'll look it up online then. Um and just check it out. I'm I'm a local agent here. My name's Alma. I'm with Century Twenty One. I've sold here in the area for almost 20 years. So, um, just checking on that property and yeah, like, we've had, we have had, we have had offers on it, um, with developers just so you know, so that's kind oh, of yeah. what we're looking at and hopefully getting. Yeah, definitely. So, yeah. That's what I would sell it to. I mean, I, I've, yes, there's several farmlands and things that I've sold there and in Salem and Woodland Hills and stuff that all, they all went to builders. So I have a, a pretty vast builders network over, from over the years. So, are you are you still there? Can you hear me? Yeah.
Yeah, they're, they looked like they sounded like they sounded like it, they came. I can't do anything with that, by the way. I know because they're I, sure I, I just love that sound effect. But um, giving them some, you know, some information essentially. But I'm going to check it, check back with that one if it yeah. sounds like. I mean, that's 1.25. Um, looks like it's falling off the market here pretty soon. I'm going to check on that. About 15 acres. Two properties, right? Two houses. Two. Yeah, I could. I didn't hear her very good. I think no, she was a 15. She had a blue suit on in the car. That's yeah. not too bad. No, that's well, not bad. Where, where about is that? Uh, you would like to know, wouldn't you? No, yeah. I'm curious. Yeah. It's down the Spanish Fork. Okay. Oh, and you can do do your <laughs> real estate transactions after the live. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm curious. No, no, no. Your real no, estate no. prospecting. <laughs> no, but um, no, of course not. But I'm just saying, like, if you're an investor looking to buy yeah. some property, if you mm-hmm. can pick up some land, you know, obviously there's a lot of factors that come into there. What is it zoned for? What you're able to build there? What you're not? Uh huh. Um, but. I'm actually, I'm actually just going to call them back and and Smart. when they when they expire, yeah. So, oh, you that, did say she had, she had an agent, right? The yeah, contract it's, she so. said it's currently listed. Which sometimes that happens. You'll see these things pop on the market um, or on the lead source if they do something on their Zillow account. They'll update their Zillow account, and then all of a sudden it pops up as if they're a for sale by owner. Makes sense. So that's why it pulls it pulls into my lead source. Whereas they're actually not, they're listed with an agent. So, but I'm going to check. I mean, if that thing falls through in the next five, six days, yeah, I'm, it's on like Donkey Kong, dude. Awesome. Take care of this action. Let's try to get one more in there before we go. We got about three minutes left. Okay, cool. That's all we need. Oh yeah. I need to know everything. Who in the what in the where? I need everything. Trust me, I hear what you're saying, but I like it's new what you're telling me. I'm curious, George. I hop in the Porsche, with five and a horse. I'm ready for war. I'm coming for throws. I can relate to this song oh, yeah. so well. Now you be surprised. Hello, we are not available now. Please call again. I gotta say, I wonder if some people are that. like, "What Is that I know, music?" Right? Yeah. yeah. Hello. Hi, Kim. This is his wife. Oh, I was looking for Kim. Sorry, I it's cutting out on me here pretty bad uh, okay hey this is him he's at work right now. okay who's this this is his wife okay uh, this is alma i'm with century 21 i talked to you a couple days ago about your loma linda house oh uh-huh so i accidentally called you <laughs> i thought i was calling okay. someone else <laughs> Hey, not a problem. I thought Thank I was calling. You. I thought I was calling Kim in my contacts. So yeah, no, we we're gonna have a conversation when you come into town. So we're gonna talk about your Loma Linda house. But no, I appreciate it. I just called you accidentally. Okay, no problem. Have a good Monday. Thanks. Good talking to you. Talk to you soon. Bye. Okay, bye. So uh, yeah, so I already set an appointment with her, and. They live out of state. They live there about 50% of the time. I think it was on, maybe on the show when I got this one. Anyways, they, uh, they, oh, live, in, they live in Missouri. Yeah, I think you're right. You remember that one? Yeah. So they live in Missouri. Just to follow up on that call for those of you guys who saw that last one. So she she's very interested in listing the property with me. They have to make a decision if they're going to sell it or not. Their kids live in the basement. Oh, yeah. So there's a couple factors there. They live in Missouri and the husband, Kim, which is why I said it's Kim there, um, the husband is, um, he works a ton. He's like constantly working everywhere. So she, they're like, we really need to meet. We really want to meet you in person. And I, I was like, well, let's do a Zoom call, whatever. And they're like, we just can't get together. He's constantly gone. And I said, well, when will you both be together? They said, when we're in Utah. I was like, okay. Well, so, then, so in like two yeah, weeks, yeah. they said. So I have them down on my calendar for it to meet in two weeks. All right. Well, it looks like we're out of time, guys. We're right at two o'clock. Oh, and, uh, right on schedule. I, I want to give you just a give uh, me a want, 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 because yeah, I really yeah. wanted another appointment. Before t- there we go. <laughs> yeah. Next week. Yeah, we always have next week, and you always have right now when you leave. <laughs> <laughs> I know you love calling with these mics because it just sounds so sexy, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Listen to the voice. You just serenade your clients. Mm-hmm. Let's get let's get some vocals. Wait, come on, I, I know you got them. You know, you know I got it, baby. <laughs> You know, I like to call more it. than fifty calls. There though. you go. Be. You want to learn how to get those uh, close those those deals at one hundred percent conversion <laughs> over the phone? <laughs> My DJ boy, one oh one nine. The end. Is that where you were on? You were yeah. on that, right? Uh huh. Yeah. yeah, that's pretty cool. That yeah, was. I was just a guest on there for like a couple of years, but yeah. that was cool. It was awesome. Well, dude, thanks again. Good yeah. job. I yeah. Think we, Two for two on that one for sure. Two for two. Yeah, it was fun. fun. That, that was, was awesome. The first two. Alan, any uh, any comments, concerns, questions, anything? Emotional outbursts. 
Yeah, what do you got? Childhood trauma, <laughs> marital no, issues. I, I got, I got, no, we'll oh, be here for 12 hours. No, <laughs> Don't open the Pandora's box. I got stories for days. So. But yeah. we'll, 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 we'll save that for next week. How about yeah, that? Awesome. I love it. Dude, thanks for being on today. Of course, dude. Uh, thank you, Daniel, in the background. Thank you, Alma, again. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know what? Let, let's uh, give him a little reminder for April... Everest, it's mm-hmm. the elevator event. Yeah, it's the elevator event. Through the eight, yeah, we just—I think we just secured a location. I'm pretty sure we are. We doing it at Marriott. Cool. Yeah, I think so. Right here downtown Salt Lake City. City Great Center. location. Uh, let's go ahead and end with that. Daniel, can you throw that on for the people? Everybody, see you later. Thanks for joining us, guys. Love you guys. Till next time. Tear it up. Mm-hmm.